Over the years, non-sugar sweeteners have been sanctified by proponents as an effective means of weight control and vilified by opponents as toxic substances that imperil health. Both sides muster studies from the scientific literature to back up their claims. But now scientists at the World Health Organization have poured over hundreds of studies and identified the most relevant ones to formulate guidelines for the public about the use of such sweeteners. The cumulative evidence indicates that essentially both proponents and opponents are wrong. The WHO's comprehensive analysis clearly shows that while there may be short-term weight loss when sugar is replaced with non-sugar sweeteners, over the long term, there's actually an increased risk of obesity. The short-term effects are due to a reduction in calories when sugar is reduced, but it seems that this isn't maintained in the long run, possibly due to a compensation effect. People may put a sweetener in their coffee and then reward themselves for this good deed by having a dessert they may have skipped had they used sugar. The WHO recommendation, therefore, is that people seeking to lose weight will not benefit from the use of non-sugar sweeteners. No distinction is made between the common sweeteners, namely Asulfame potassium, aspartame, advantame, cyclamates, neotame, saccharin, sucralose, or stevia. Many opponents have claimed an increased risk of cancer with non-sugar sweeteners, but the WHO analysis has not revealed any such effect, except perhaps for an uncertain link between saccharin and bladder cancer. As far as other conditions, such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and premature death are concerned, an association with the use of non-sugar sweeteners was indeed detected. Associations, however, cannot prove a cause-and-effect relationship, and reverse causation is a distinct possibility. In other words, people who are at risk for disease are more likely to use non-sugar sweeteners with the belief that these reduce risk. Therefore, the WHO guidelines advise that such sweeteners not be used with the hope of reducing the risk of non-communicable diseases such as cancer, diabetes, respiratory ailments, or cardiovascular disease. Basically, chewing sugar-free gum, using non-sugar sweeteners in coffee, or drinking diet beverages are unlikely to provide any health benefit. The best bet is to reduce added sugar in the diet without replacement by a non-sugar sweetener. That can be done by reducing processed foods, cutting down on, or preferably eliminating, soft drinks. Naturally occurring sugars in fruit and vegetables do not count as added sugars in the diet. Finally, it is important to note that the WHO guidelines point out that while the majority of studies conclude that non-sugar sweeteners do not help with weight control and do not reduce the risk of disease, not all studies agree. Consequently, the WHO scientists state that the overall recommendation to avoid such sweeteners is based on, quote, low certainty. And now we wait for the backlash from the sweetener producers. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.